Hello and welcome to Match Officials Mic'd Up, the show that brings you in-game communications between Premier League match officials from some of the key refereeing incidents over the past month. I'm joined by Howard Webb, the Chief Refereeing Officer at PGMOL. Howard, thanks for joining us. And for those who may not have watched last time, why don't you tell us about the purpose of this show? Well, hi, Michael. It's great to be here again. Um, the show is all part of our ongoing commitment to be more open and transparent. We really want to give football fans some insight into how decisions are made in the Premier League, some information that we think they will find interesting and useful. And, of course, that involves revealing some of the audio that happens live at the time between the on-field match officials and those officials working in the VAR space. OK, so who are we going to be hearing from today? Well, you're going to hear a range of voices on today's show. You're going to hear the on-field officials as they're talking to each other, making that real-time decision. And then you'll also hear from the VAR and the AVAR who are working in the video operations room, checking the on-field decision, trying to identify if there's any clear and obvious errors that they need to intervene upon. And then also the replay operator too, who gives the angles to the video match officials. When we're showing the video, there'll be subtitles, and any of those subtitles that are seen in green are the times when the VAR is speaking to the referee directly. What we hear today is all the voices, but of course, not all of the officials hear what's being said all of the time. So it's maybe not quite as chaotic as it sometimes sounds when you're hearing the show. OK, right, well, let's start in only one place. Luis Diaz's disallowed goal at Tottenham last week. I'm sure most people have already seen it by now, but let's take another listen. Oh, good, both holding. Both holding. Yeah, leave it though. Waiting, delaying, delaying. Yes. Yeah. Give it. Coming yeah. back for the offside, Hello. mate. Just checking the offside, delay, delay. Give me a kick point, let's go. Yep. Kick point, yeah, please. No so, here we are. Wait, it's okay. Um, just get a tight angle. Yeah, give me 2D line ready, I feel as well for frame right, two so after that. Frame, That's fine. Frame 2 there. Perfect. I've got yep. the time on this, I clocked 2D it, so. line on left boot. Yep. Well, let me Remember just angle. I think I might be this angle better. Hey. Happy with okay. this angle? Yeah. You don't yep. you? 2D line on the boot. 2D line on the boot. Yep, okay. So 2D line on the boot. Uh, I'll, I'll check in. complete. Check complete. It's fine. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Off. Thank, Thank you, mate. Thank you, mate. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. Process, the on-field decision was offside. Are you are you happy with this? Yeah. Are you happy with this? Offside on field decision. Go. Yeah. That's, no, that's what it does. What? On-field decision was offside. Are you happy with this Never image? Yes, yeah, onside. The image we gave you is onside. Left back. He's played. He's yeah. gone offside. Out. Delay, delay, delay. Yeah, uh, Ollie's saying to delay. Right, Ollie's saying to delay. Pardon? Ollie's calling in to say delay the game. To, to complete the yeah. decision is also. Cut the thing. Ollie's saying to delay. Ollie's saying to delay. Ollie? Yeah. yeah delay on. the game. To delay the game. Stop the yeah, game. They've restarted Nothing the game. The yeah, they've restarted. Yeah. Can't do anything. No. I can't do anything. I Stay can't back. do anything. OK, I'm sure... Well, I've got some de more detailed questions on this to follow, but first of all, just give us a broad overview on how you, how you viewed that. Yeah, of course, you know, we... Uh... We took the unusual step of releasing the audio from this situation uh, not long after it happened. We wanted to show everybody what was very quickly apparent to us was a, a pretty significant human error, loss of concentration. And, of course, we're all disappointed that the VAR system didn't step in to rectify a clear error that we'd seen on the field with the, the disallowing of the goal. And, and nobody's more disappointed than the officials themselves. They take pride in their work. They want to be a positive influence on the game. And, of course, in this situation, that wasn't the case. Of course, without VAR, that disallowed goal would still have been a disallowed goal. But VAR exists to step in when we make a, a wrong decision on the field. So, of course, we're disappointed. And our job then was to try to find out what happened and what we could do to prevent that sort of thing happening in the future. OK, well, let's start at the beginning. How did that confusion occur? 
Yeah, of course, that's a fair question. And I think you hear at the very start of the clip, uh, Darren England, the VAR, saying checking the offside. And then he goes into the process of checking whether or not Luis Diaz was in an offside position. Uh, he's able to do that because the flag was correctly delayed by the on-field assistant referee. I think you can hear that Darren's going through the process pretty quickly. We sometimes get uh, criticism for being uh, a little bit slow sometimes, and people want us to be as quick as we can be. And we do focus on efficiency, but never at the sacrifice of accuracy. We need to be accurate. But you can hear Darren's trying to be quick, and then he puts a line across onto Christian Romero, and that shows a very clear picture. And I think at that point, Darren loses sight of across onto Christian Romero, and that shows a very clear picture. And I think at that point, Darren loses sight of what the on-field decision was, sees the clear picture with Diaz in a, an onside position as it, as it happens, and quickly check completes it. The, the game is ready to restart very quickly. He communicates to the on-field referee, Simon Hooper, check complete, check complete. Simon hears that, obviously assumes that uh, the check complete is for the offside goal uh, or the disallowing of the goal, and the game restarts. Those words, check complete, they feel a little bit vague in light of what's happened. Are you happy with, with, with those words or do you want more substantial sort of comments on it? Yeah, we know that human error can happen in all walks of life and, and it happened here. One of the things that we have to do is put things in place to ensure that should we have a human error, it doesn't have the damage impact that we saw on, on this occasion. So one of the things that you know, this has brought in sharp focus is the need to reiterate some of those communication protocols that are really valuable in VAR to prevent this type of thing happening. So we want the on-field referee to communicate to the VAR what the on-field decision is very clearly and then the VAR to go back to the referee and acknowledge that they've heard that properly. The VAR goes through the process then of checking the situation, giving clear direction to the replay operator to get the right angles, speaking to the assistant VAR as they're going through that as well, so that the assistant VAR can be another check and balance, if you like, and then before communicating to the field, speaking to the AVAR to say what their intended direction of travel is going to be. Then at that moment, not just saying check complete, check complete, because what are you check completing? Saying check complete, goal confirmed. In this case, check complete, offside confirmed. And then that's another trigger, obviously, to the on-field officials um, that, uh, you know, that they're going in the wrong direction. So we've put quite a lot of steps in place to ensure that the, the, uh, the, the error that we saw in that important game doesn't happen again. Lots of people I've spoken to after the event said, OK, well, the ball went out again 30 seconds later. Yeah. Why can't the referee... It's an exceptional... Why can't the referee just say, let's stop the game and, and let's go back 30 seconds? Yeah, I heard quite a few people ask that question. I understand why people would would ask that uh, would ask that question. And actually, the the VAR and the AVAR asked themselves that question too when the penny dropped as to what had happened. I think twenty seconds had passed, and at that point they considered whether or not they could intervene to stop the game. But they recognised that the the uh, the laws of the game, as set by FIFA and the International FA Board, doesn't allow that. There's obviously a, a process in place that sits in the laws of the game about how we use VAR to make sure it's it's delivered consistently throughout every league in the in the world, and, and it doesn't allow you to go back in those circumstances. And uh, and as such, they decided not to not to intervene. But I understand why that question was asked, and and I know that uh, the International FA Board are, in fact, before this situation happened, I, I knew they were going to do a full review of the. The, the, the laws of the game relating to the use of VAR. It's been in place for seven years now. When it was written, there'd never been a game utilising VAR anywhere in the world. They put a, a protocol in place and it served the game really well. But now we've got lived experience of situations like we saw this week, then you know we can uh, feed into that as well and the IFAB will look at whether or not there's a need to tweak some of it. And I'm sure that they'll be looking at this aspect of, of how VAR is used as well. Was the referee aware of all this that was happening around him as the game was going on? No, it, it wasn't. I know people talked about, you know, the expression on his face, giving giving the Would you want sign to be told you, but he, he didn't know at all till the end of the game. Um, I think it's better if you don't know. You know, right. you want to stay focused in the moment. You don't want this in in your in your in your mind when you're trying to make decisions throughout the rest of the game. So um, I think um, you know it's better that he doesn't know, and uh, and in this case, he certainly didn't, and nor did any of the other on-field officials. OK, so now we've got a couple of clips from the most recent match round which show that some of these changes have already been put in place. So, let's start with Anthony Martial's disallowed goal against Brentford. APP for now, the Now, Martial. Not for me, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. Martial. 
Offside, offside. Offside, Kevin. On field decision, offside. The reverse crossover. They're checking, yeah, they're checking. I don't know. They will. Backwards. Down. That's the later lay checking Harry. offside, checking offside. That's frame two for you yeah. there. Decision is offside. Yeah. Harry, they're going to check. So the just go back to frame two. Just do me. Yeah, so that's frame two for you there. Confirmed. Uh, Can you just show me frame one, frame two? Yep. So let's go back to pro so. So that's one, two, three. Yeah, perfect. So two from there. Play it through. We side on position. So we've got Marshall yep. looking clearly offside there. Do you have a better angle just to confirm the position? I've got that, but it doesn't inclu include the ball. That's fine. It. But he is ahead of. He is. He is clearly ahead of, of that player. Just pan yep. back out live. Can you do just a split screen from when he plays yep. the ball and then that image? So confirming he's ahead of the play, yeah, confirming offside. Sorry, sorry, Happy yeah, Nicky here confirm. with that. Mads confirming on field decision, offside, confirmed, check complete. So confirm we're restarting with offside, yes? Confirmed. Offside. Okay, so what changes have we, we heard there? Only if, you know, not so long after the, the, the big mistake at. At Liverpool. Yeah, of course, having seen what happened in, in Spurs Liverpool, we analysed the situation, we had a look at what we needed to do better to put some safeguards in place. We want to be a positive influence on the game, Michael, all of the time. VAR normally is it rectifies a lot of clear and obvious errors, but on that occasion it fell short and you know we, we're really disappointed for the game, we're disappointed for our reputation. So we worked hard over the, the, uh, the subsequent days to have a look at what we needed to do to put in place those safeguards around the communication to avoid that sort of thing happening. Again, we, we got all of the officials together and we spoke through the need to go through that process very diligently, confirming the on-field decision so there's no doubt what that on-field decision is, and then the VAR confirming that back, and then going through that process, consulting with the AVAR before the final decision is communicated on-field, and then check complete, uh, completing the decision if that's the, uh, the way that we're going to go with the, uh, the check uh, and confirming what the decision is was that we're check completing. In that situation, with the disallowing of that goal, it was an own goal by Brentford, uh, we saw Martial was in an offside position. Really good on-field decision, actually, by the assistant referee with him coming back. Doesn't matter that the ball goes backwards, it's still offside. And, uh, and we saw a lot of that learning in the communication side of things, which a lot of it was just reiterating what's been happening for a long time. Maybe it slid a little bit in the situation we saw at Tottenham being uh, put into place in that situation there. OK, our next clip is from Luton against Tottenham on Saturday and a disallowed goal for Tom Lockyer after a foul was spotted in the build-up. Now, just this oh, side. Yeah, clear pulls, that yeah. side. Tacker, Tacker. 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 Possible push. Get the post. Giving a foul for a push okay. just delayed. In my opinion, it's also... Giving a foul for yeah. a push it's also, just delayed. It's also offside, I believe. Brooksy, can you confirm on-field decision, please? On-field decision is a, a defensive free kick for a push. Wait there, wait there. Push on Romero. Yes, uh, uh, whoever it was okay. at the near post, mate. Yeah, Ollie, thank you. I Just check in now. Also... Ollie, yeah, I've got you, Neil. Okay, yeah, I've yeah, yeah. got you, Neil. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to right, yeah, go from the free kick, please. Come on, I think that's fine on that view. Head goal, go at Romero, because if that's a push, the rest is irrelevant. You've got a tight angle to that push. I've yeah. seen here, Biz, I've seen two hands yeah. extended, yeah, yeah. I think it's a pushing yeah, the player out of the way, which causes that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, pushing him in the chest as well. Yeah, pushing the chest, yeah. So, too. check complete on foul on Romero. I agree. Yeah. Brooks, it's Ollie. Yeah. Check complete foul on Romero. Check complete. Thank you. Confirmed defensive free kick. OK, what was your view on that one? Very similar, really. The communication was very concise, very clear, good confirmatory uh, messaging going both ways. Uh, I like the way that John Brooks held his whistle, having seen the foul by Eddie Bayo on Romero, to allow the VAR to check that passage of play. And uh, Michael Oliver, Oliver, the VAR, uh, can check complete, having seen that very clear post. So, good example of what we expect to see through that enhanced communication. OK, time for a quick break now, but in part two, we've got some more exclusive audio for you with handball, a serious foul play on the agenda. See you in a few minutes. Welcome back to Match Officials Mic'd Up. We've got another couple of incidents to discuss with PGMOL's Chief Refereeing Officer, Howard Webb. So let's go back to match week six for Luton against Wolves and a handball that provoked a lot of discussion. No, doesn't take the ball. 
Yeah, maybe people might overturn the possession. Zach is still off yeah. the pitch. Good. No, 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 he doesn't win the ball. He's just catching just, him on the ankle. Just, play, 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 play. There's nothing for us. No. Now. What's that? Here? Appealing for handball. Yeah. His arms up there. His arms up. Relax. Relax. Right. Josh, just checking the no. penalty for you. Same again. Take your players away. Yeah, no, I've you. Mate. Yes, it's been changed. That that. Yeah, that's, I think they're right. saying there might be a difference. Just listen. Got an angle Team players are out to you. Looking for another angle now. I've got so, I, yeah. So the arms but but I think right. his arm is above Go his on. shoulder. That's all right. So it, it, his arm's above Relax. his shoulder, but it takes a massive deflection. So you've Relax. got a very unnatural position. What's, what's it deflected off? His own foot. So you've got it deflected off his they're own checking. foot, but look at the position right. of the arm anyway. Got another angle as well. Ah. Okay. Let's bring in the other angle. So on balance, you I I. I, d I don't like the position of his hand. It's so far. It's so up high. It's above his head. Yeah. Do you need another angle? Yeah. No, that, I have that no angle's fine. Just watch it. Okay. I think it's checked complete. But just take Dorse away. Dorse. The Dorse. The check the the check it. Check it. Let check it. Yeah, we'll check APP. Josh, penalty is confirmed due to the position of the arm. We're just checking APP. Thank you. So penalty this, is confirmed. Uh, term, They're now checking the APP. So penalty, yes, unless there's an offside in the build-up. Okay. So slow, penalty, slow, slow. because his arm, because his arm is up above his shoulder. No, it does slow, matter. Slow, slow, you can't fine. have your arm up there. Yeah. No. And then it's what we've just seen. Right, Max, just listen to me. In a minute, if they so confirm the, the APP and it's a penalty, I need you. The arm players position away. For three, a point of contact. All right. On the arm, yeah. I mean, look at the attack on the face. They're basically checking for an offside position. Is that ahead? In my opinion. Check complete on all, Josh. Penalty kick. Check, check complete. Penalty. Take players away. Well, I think a lot of people watching that will think it's a bit harsh, mainly because of the deflection off his own boots. What's your view on that? Yeah, you said at the start of the clip that it created a lot of discussion, and it certainly did. It split opinion. I've spoke to a lot of people in the game who feel that that deflection off the, off the foot should negate the, the, the handball. Um, over the years, the laws of the game have been simplified a little bit in terms of handball. At one time, well, not that long ago, actually, uh, an arm above the shoulder would be deemed as automatically unnatural and therefore a handball would be given. But those words have been taken out and the only words that have replaced it really are around unnatural position, unjustifiable position, taking a risk by putting your arm in that position in the first place. And then the officials have to make a judgment around whether that is what's happened in, in their games. Josh Smith, the referee here, felt that that arm was so un unnaturally positioned, extremely above the head, that it should be penalised. Um, I, I have some sympathy for the player. Is put a foot out to block the, uh, the shot, and that's caused the, the ball to go onto that... Uh, extended arm that is a long way up isn't it you don't see that arm yeah. position too too often um and in the end the uh, the arm position trumped to the fact that it had come off his his foot first there's no sort of negation in the laws of the game no mitigation in the laws of the game for a player trying to block a shot getting his foot or body onto the ball and then it going onto an arm that's in a, a position that the officials deem is unnatural if you play the ball onto your own arm deliberate playing as opposed to a block, what we saw Gomez do here, then there is a, a mitigation. Handball wouldn't be given because the argument is why would you block your own clearance? Why would you make yourself unnaturally bigger? This player, Gomez, is going in to block a shot and as he does so, his leg goes out, his arm goes up. Now, he gets his foot on the ball, but then the ball goes onto an arm, which is really above his head, and it stops the ball continuing to maybe to another player from, yeah. from Wolves. So, uh, from Luton, sorry. So, so I do... I do understand the argument. Um, I think we, we always consult with the stakeholders in the game. Within the laws of the game, maybe there's some way we can you know, use some flexibility to say what we feel in the English game should or shouldn't be handball. And if it does come off another body part like we saw there, we can talk about whether that should negate the award of a penalty. But what we can't do really is say that any deflection prevents a handball because then you get players standing in front of a shot, arms out uh, wide, and then a tiny little deflection off a leg onto a full arm would prevent a penalty being given. So it's not maybe quite as easy as people think. Um, but, uh, yeah, I had some sympathy, but don't forget, the on-field decision was, was um, a penalty, and then the VAR checks to see whether that decision was clearly and obviously wrong, and clearly the VAR, John Brooks, uh, deemed it wasn't because he saw the position of the arm above the head. OK, and for our final clip, let's head to Stamford Bridge for Chelsea against Aston Villa in match week six, which saw Melo Gusto receiving a red card for serious foul play. No, on. Chest. Yep. 
tackle's fine. I don't think it's a foul. foul. I think it's a foul made a caution for me. Yeah, it's a caution, caution for me, well. mate. He's caught him at higher, higher Just a little bit. I'm going to check the foul. Yellow card, blue 27. Yellow card. Right, OK, so show me the point of contact. Right. Delayed. So no, I'm saying yep. he's coming from distance. He leaves the ground. Show me the point of contact, mate. Show me how far away he is from that ball. Uh, OK. Do you want the Dr. Luca or are you right? Angle. He's fine. Yeah. Okay. Run that. OK, no treatment required. Is he, he getting catch up him, then? actually. Yeah, if you look at that angle, yeah. he catches him on Still the... Delay. It's quite low. It's on the side of the ankle. The only issue I've got is a buckling okay. angle. Just go, mate, the other side. OK. Just wait. The I think there's potential on field review. Yeah, just go before again, mate. Does yeah. he know to wait, Jared? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send over for a yeah. potential... What number is he? 20 Just wait, please. Wait. 20, 20, 20 what? Is going to pop up before I get there? Okay. Wait, please. Oh, I have no idea. Dan. Jared, it's Mads. I'm going to recommend uh, an on-field yeah. review for a potential red card for serious foul play. Right. Let me know when you get to the screen, mate. Where are we going, then? My side, up here. It's up now. Screen's up. Yeah, I've got it. So That's the angle that I want to, want to show him, first of all. Okay. That's the angle that I want to show him, mate, please. Perfect. Go another one more frame. One more frame. One more frame. Because it's more of a buckle. No yep. There. Yep. Maybe one more frame to the left, actually, because then we see that the foot's... Mate, yeah. mate. Okay. You happy with that, Nick? Yeah. Okay, I'm mate. At the, I'm at the okay, mate. I, I've got, I've got a silly image there. The yeah, so that's that's the point of contact. You can see, we'll run it through as well. Um, you can see the, the ankle buckle as well also. Um, it comes from distance and he temporarily leaves the ground. Yeah, okay. Can you show and me another point angle, angle full speed? Yeah, of course, I can, mate. We'll also show you that. Switch to just show it at this angle here. I'm up, yeah, just show that at full speed, mate, please. Yeah. Okay, so I'm seeing point of contact ab full speed. Ab above the ankle. Where is he? With the right leg, momentarily off the ground with two feet. I'm going to change the yellow card to red card, blue 27. Confirm blue 27, mate. Okay, yeah. Is it right back position? Where is he, mate? Right back. back position, Get the yeah. TV signal. He's got hands on his hips. Okay, got him. White boots. So the yellow is cancelled, and it's red. I think we've seen a few tackles like that this month, Curtis Jones as well um, at Tottenham. Are you happy with the outcome there? Yeah, I think that's a clear red card. I think the uh, the point of contact, the, the mode of contact, the full studs with a turned foot above the ankle, that real significant buckle of... The, uh, the ankle suggests that the player's uh, and, uh, safety has been endangered through an excessive force challenge. So I, I expected that one to be intervened upon by the VAR and I think the red card outcome is, is correct. OK, right. More recently, Kovacic. What do we think about this one, the yellow card, first of all? I'll just play it here. We can have another look at it. What was your view on this? It was a yellow card in-game. What's the difference between that and the decision we've, we've just seen or the tackle we've just seen? Yeah, I mean, of course, we, we want to be as consistent as we can be throughout every game among our group, uh, dealing with s the same situations in the same way each week. But, of course, all situations vary slightly. We accept and un understand this. And this is clearly a poor tackle. And I'm pretty confident if a red card had been given by Michael Oliver on the date, it would have been a very um, straightforward check complete. But he doesn't. He issues a yellow card. I think there's a few differences. Uh, the, uh, the player Kovacic um, comes into the tackle with the right leg. The, there's some weight on the left leg as he, as he kind of lunges in. The, the right heel hits the ground and then the contact is a little bit more to the side with a kind of like an upright foot as opposed to a, a side-on foot that we saw with Gusto. A few small differences, I think, that led the VAR to feel that the on-field decision here of yellow card wasn't clearly and clearly incorrect, therefore check completing it feeling that if it had intervened, it would have been a re-refereeing of that decision by the referee on the field. So, what about the second one? I know we're not going to show... Do you think he was fortunate to stay on for the second yellow card a little bit later on? I, I, I do. I mean, obviously, the VAR can't get involved. The second yellows uh, are something that uh, the VAR is not able to get involved in. But, yeah, I think he was an extremely fortunate player to stay on the field of, of play. Of course, the referee, one of our best referees, one of the best referees in the world, Michael Oliver, will, will no doubt review that. Uh, he doesn't want to have a, a negative impact on the game by overreacting to something and sometimes players will be on a yellow card and then there'll be pressure to show a second one. Pressure will come from the players on the field. But, you know, that's also 
uh, true that if you underreact, you have a negative impact on the game. So I think when he reflects on it, he'll realise that the second one should have been a, uh, a yellow card as well, which would have seen Kovacic sent off for two yellow cards, having been, you know, um, on the benefit of this particular decision here, which was borderline, the first one. Yeah. Final quick answer. Slow mos. Are we happy with the slow mos showing, you know, whether it should be yellow, red? Yeah, I think we have to use we have to use slow mos just to see the exact point of contact, the nature of the contact. The referee sees it at full speed on the field. So I think you know it is a viable use of VAR to to look at it in uh, in slow mo and, and freeze frame. But you heard the referee Jared Gillett on that gusto situation looking at it also in full speed. We do ask them to do that when at the screen because that's the way the game is played. Brilliant. Howard, thank you for your time. Much appreciated. We got through plenty there. We'll see you next time on Match Officials Mic'd Up. Today, uh, uh, this weekend, mm -hmm. has been one of the, the most extraordinary weekends of, of results. Yes. Everything on, on Saturday was just unbelievable. And then it was capped by that game between Tottenham and Liverpool. Now, look, mm -hmm. we don't do VAR chat no, no, no. because it's very dull. Yeah. By and large, it's it, very yeah, dull. Yeah, it's yeah. just people sharing opinions and, and that yeah. usually the truth is somewhere in the middle but we have to talk about VAR after the game between yeah. Tottenham and Liverpool because it was just it's... it was just a, a mind-blowingly bizarre sequence mm. of, events, of events right yeah. from start to finish and this is um this is, when I was watching it and seeing it unfold I'm just thinking they've got to do so they've got to be more transparent now it's just it's blatantly obvious that the process, whatever the process is and how they're doing it, the it's not, it's not working. So Luis Diaz is flagged offside yeah. for this goal, which fair enough by eye for the mm -hmm. assistant referee, yeah. flags him offside. Then, as broadcasters, we're waiting to get the pictures through yeah. with the, the line on it as yeah. it's going to be checked with, with yeah. VAR. But we're not provided with the pictures. Look, so, yeah. and, they're, and they're saying checking disallowed goal offside yeah. rather than possible offside, yes. which is what is normally there if yeah. the goal has been given and then awarded. That's important for later on, by the way. <laughs> um, so, the, so the goal is, is just like we're waiting as broadcasters to get the, the pictures with the, out, the yeah. lines on to see, because you know that sometimes by eye, it isn't always correct. Um, but it, it, and it's not clear enough to determine that by no. eye. You no, get no, a no. feel for it, but it's not, it's not it's, clear enough. Mm -hmm. We don't get anything. We don't get anything by half no. time. Yeah. We know that we're not really allowed to dra draw our own lines on yeah. because they're not as, as finely calibrated as the ones that the official VAR that they don't use. use. That they don't use. No, no, well, they don't use the broadcast ones because they're yeah. thicker and they're more of a sort of blunt tool, whereas theirs a much sharper, sharper, calibrated instrument. Fine. Get to full time, nothing. Mm. Then, about an hour after full time in the game, we get a statement from PGMOL that says there has been a significant human error mm. and that VAR did not get involved. Subsequently... There is then a, mm. uh, a report from Dale Johnson of ESPN that says, my understanding is that the VAR and assistant VAR thought the goal was given oh, okay. and that they were working from that point of view. They thought it was clear that he was onside from the pictures and so they didn't draw the lines, is the sort of brief explanation of that. All of which leaves, I would argue, more questions than mm. answers. My brain's frazzled. <laughs> you know something... But, it, but that's, uh, that's yeah. the point, Mina. It's a, it's a difficult it, one to, to pick out be. what's happened and, and where. And that, that's often the case. When people mm. make a mistake, it's difficult yes, they do. To, to put logic on it. Because so, like, we've, got, the we've got... They're in there for this reason and the assistant's in there to help. I can't understand yeah. how with the procedure and what you're meant to go through, all the protocols and procedure to get it right um, for Liverpool, get it right for the fans, you know, get it right for them, let them know what's going on. It's, that's unacceptable. Now, you know, I know we're talking about human error and, it, yeah, you know, people do make mistakes. But I don't think that when you've got everything was at your disposal, like we do have here, um, that they should be making mistakes like that. I, I, I go deeper. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not so... You see, you see the, the, some, of the, some of the incidents and you think, you know what, I'm not even going to argue. We need to be doing something grassroots level to make sure that we can attract referees to the game because the way this is going, we've got people at the top of the game who are not being pushed, not, no accountability for mistakes, Really bad mistakes, and even PGMOL still haven't even apologised to Liverpool properly. Serious mistakes that should not be happening. We need to not start worrying about the next incumbent of, of referees and where they're coming from, instead of us talking about this kind of stuff, because we're not going to be able to do much about this, Kel, simply because VAR is going to be there to stay. Yeah. We're not going to be able to change that. 
And now we need to find another way of making sure we can get better referees involved. In, in terms of the, the referees, so Simon Hooper, relatively inexperienced compared to Michael Oliver, who was the fourth official, who had been out officiating 48 hours previously. Yeah, in the UAE. In the UAE. Yeah. And therefore, I think there was, and as, as Darren England, who was the, the VAR and the assistant VAR, I think, were, were out there. And that perhaps played into the fact that Michael Oliver wasn't on the pitch mm -hmm. for this game, that he was fourth yeah. official. But, but what been. was the biggest mm -hmm. match of the, of yeah. the weekend? And, yeah, of course, when you think about, I mean, the magnitude of the game, it's a massive game, um, two teams that have started the season well, two big teams, and you like to think that you'd have the, the best referee for those games. Mm -hmm. It's no different to like a Champions League final. You'd, mm -hmm. want, you'd want the best referee or whatever it is. And that mistake, you don't really, you should, we shouldn't be sitting here talking about that. You know, we shouldn't mm -hmm. be talking about the game and, be and the score and stuff. But the fact that we're talking about VAR, it's just, it's crazy, but the mistake. I did the game. I'm, I was watching it. I'm, I'm sort of like waiting for the line because I could see it. Mm. It obviously weren't clear, but I had a feeling that we it was know. onside. Yeah, you just know. Kind of feel, yeah. but, but we've had those before and then the lines have been drawn. And you yeah. think, I, so we were waiting for kind of. But on this occasion, proof. though, I just had a feeling. Yeah. Like just seeing it live. I just a thought, striker's instinct. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, you went for the line. It was, it was checked so quick in the game. I was like, what's happened yeah. here, sort of thing. It was. It was very strange. Yeah, it was all done and dusted very quickly. And inside the, the ground, the VAR um, caption was up on the screens around the, the ground much longer after the, the decision was, was actually made. Yes, yeah, so you could see the still of the image and mm. defined by the naked eye that actually looks on side. Mm. I mean, if I'm applying for a job to be a referee at this point, or I do if you want to attract better, it seems to me there's just not clear communication between everyone where we can actually have a conversation. Is this offside? What's yeah. going on? Is there something wrong in the, the, the fact that there isn't a communication that's clear? And on the topic of actually, you know, giving this game to an inexperienced, I mean, we're having, we're seeing that in Europe as well, is that some of the big games are being given to uh, referees who perhaps aren't the biggest or most experienced, mm. and it's a way of training them. Obviously, you don't <coughs> want to train them when it's the biggest match and it has not. such a, an impact yeah. um, on, obviously, the final ranking. And it has a financial impact, too, because of how much money you'll make, depending on where you obviously end up in the, in the league. But it's also a situation where there's something that needs to be changed in the hierarchy, something that needs mm. to be changed on a communication level, and that we train level, train referees to the highest level and that they feel comfortable to have the conversation so yeah. that we don't get to the, to the situation that we did now. MOL have just thrown today's match officials under the bus. Oh, really? Go on. PGMOL's statement reads, we acknowledge a significant human error occurred during the first half of Tottenham versus Liverpool. Correct, it did. The goal by Luis Diaz was disallowed for offside by the on-field team of match officials. This yeah. was a clear and obvious factual error. Yes. We all agree? Yes, yes. Yeah. What's the point of VAR? <coughs> to clear that up. And should have resulted in the goal being awarded through VAR intervention. Ultimately, they got round two. Yeah. So where were they? However, VAR failed to intervene. Listen, PGML will conduct a full review into the circumstances. Yeah, it, 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 this is not the on-field officials' fault. Of course, this it's is not. nothing to do with them. They are paid to make decisions. You can only VAR do what you was brought see in. in real time, and yes. every now and again they're going to get one wrong. VAR was brought in to correct that. The significance of the error today, we will not know until the end of the season. No, it's true. If Liverpool lose the title by two points, we'll look back on this and say, well, hold on. If, if yeah. that goal had stood as it should have done, yeah. if they'd taken the time to do what they should have done, Correct. which is put lines on that, as we did, this, this surface from here, we were the first broadcasters to look at this forensically and tweet that picture. And mm -hmm. from there, it caught fire. The PGMOL had nowhere to go from this point. That's a, that's a shocking decision. Richard, we have watched over the years of the, the VAR them disallow important goals for two millimetres, six centimetres, these kind of distances, a kneecap, a, a shirt sleeve, and, and correct them and disallow them and say, well, we, it's factual, we get that right, and that's our job to do that. This is the biggest mistake I've ever seen in offside in the VAR in the history of this thing, because you, we didn't even need it to know that Luis Diaz was onside. I, I repeat what I said at half-time when we first saw it. The debate was not about whether he's on or off. It was clear he was on, yes. even without the line. The question remains, why didn't they stop long enough to put a line on it and be certain? And because these it. situations have to be black 
and white. They're not subjective. No. Nope. All they did was turn a blind eye to that and say, well, we, we don't need to check that. He's offside. No, he wasn't. And it's not, it's not the fault of the on-field officials. Not at all. They did their job as all. well as they could. And that's, that's, I mean, it has to be said. Did you know they were quick enough to get involved in the sending off, cut his joints, and send them over to there Correctly. and do that? Yes, no but, problem with that. But they were quick enough to get involved here. Yeah. This is a this is a, a, a game-changing moment. This is a moment this, that Liverpool could have won the game on. This could also be a title yes, changing moment. Or a Champions League moment. It could be anything like that, Richard. You can't just honestly, there is no excuse. I mean that. There is no excuse for that. Week None at all. The week after week. Anyway, at least they did the, 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 the more gracious of the two things and admitted they had no the mistake, option, but there was nowhere to go. They had no option. They could not fudge it. They had to admit their error. They had to. This is, our... <laughs> this is what happened. There you go. There you go. That's it, taken directly across. He's at least a metre on so, side. So the question it's is not, not was he on or off? The question is, why didn't the matchday centre, why didn't Darren England, the VAR, take his time to look at that? And I do not buy the reason that we've been given from the production team, which is, well, it keeps the game moving. No, it's a it's nonsense. Close, we don't want to it's a nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Three minutes, 20 seconds, I repeat, at Goodison today, mm -hmm. to find whether Calvert-Lewin was onside or three minutes, 20 seconds. It would have taken, what? Richard, look, it, it shouldn't have taken any time. You, we can see by the naked eyes on side. Now, they should be able to clarify that within 30 seconds a minute, max. When it's as straight as that, when it's as easy as that, when it's as... Obvious is that. The, match, the VAR should be all across that and produce these kind of pictures that show he was onside. The goal should have stood. See, we're always told offsides are not as subjective. It's on or off. Yeah. Well, they've made <laughs> yeah. that subjective. There they go. Until, uh, it's until not often we ask. Listen, oh. it's not often I feel sorry for Liverpool, as you'll, you'll know that. But you have to feel for them here. I mean, as I said, I think they were a bit unlucky with Curtis Jones, but... I don't have an argument with him being set off. put a line That's on it, and it'll prove one way or the other whether he was on or off. The naked eye now is not, it's not good enough. No. You, you can't run that risk. It was with, with the universally accepted technology by both FIFA and broadcasters all over the world, we did this. <laughs> and that's how clear it was. He's on side. And we don't know distance. how significant that might be. We don't know. No. But it's likely that it could be it going could be. forward. And this is the statement released by the PGMOL today as a result of us, I'll say it again, at B in Sports doing our job correctly. Um, the goal by Luis Diaz was disallowed for offside by the on-field team. This was a clear and obvious factual error. No, it wasn't. No. I'll, I'll defend them. Yes. No, it wasn't. I know. It was what the, 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 the on-field team did their job yes. as best as yes. they could real time. It was not an obvious factual error. Should have resulted in the goal being, dis uh, 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 being awarded through VAR intervention. Correct, VAR should have got involved at that point. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But VAR didn't intervene. Um, PGMOL will conduct a full review into the circumstances which led to the error. Uh, uh, will the PGMOL have something to say about it come the end of the season if Liverpool don't win the title? Anyway, they did what they could, only could, have to hold their hands up. The error was there. It didn't intervene. Correct. That's the error. We're at St James's Park here in Newcastle upon Tyne. I'm Derek Ray here on the commentary position, joined by Lee Dixon. And we're fully convinced this game will live up to its billing. It's Newcastle United and they face Brentford. Cheers, Derek. Yes, excited about this one. Interesting matchup for me. We should get a good game. Might be a chance here. Rifled against the post, but back in play. Well, he's given us away. Crossing possibilities. A fine block. Must take the lead here. I must say, he's let himself... Joel Linton. Ritchie. Could cross it in here.
The attack continues. They're making considerable progress. Well, he has the measure of his opponent. And the pressure is on. Can he clear it away? Sam Maxima. Joel Linton. Ball with Shelby. Matt Ritchie. He has time to play it over. And he's through here. And so it will be a corner. Over it comes. The end product just wasn't there. Jansson. Really closing him down. Opportunity it is. It has to be. And there it is. 1-0. The efforts have been rewarded. And look at the celebrations. Well, Derek, as we see it again, it's a big mistake. You try to teach youngsters not to get caught in possession and be aware of what's around you. He has no clue and he pays the price.